Hi, welcome to the session. This week we're looking at the Game of Thrones theme and we're going to recreate that in Logic Pro. The Game of Thrones theme by Ramin Javadi is a really recognizable theme and has an excellent melody. So we're going to try to recreate that sound using, you know, the Logic basic instruments and see if we can come close to the feeling of the original theme. There are libraries out there with more realistic string sounds, brass sounds, but this is not that kind of tutorial. We're going to try to get the same feeling using only Logic instruments. So let's go. So here's the project and I'm going to play it to you from the start. So this is a slightly condensed version of the track. Uh, BPM is 84.75, which is what I found the original one to be. And um, it's up here for reference. So I'm referencing the sounds from that and I cut out one section just to shorten the whole track. Um, and yeah, just to get a feel for it. So I compare it every now and then. Let's start with uh, the sounds. Okay, a big part of the sound is the percussion, the 6-8 kind of percussion, and um, the European folk kit, which is something you can find in the standard um, logic settings, which is under uh, here, which is World European European Folk Kit. And uh, yeah, I'm going to take out the bus compressors and the EQ. And there's some interesting sounds in the folk kit. Nice big, uh, you know, like warm sounds. Very interesting sounds, very useful sounds. And some of them um, sound like this. You can use them as big hits. So this section sounds like this. Which is a pretty good bass for the big kind of hits, you know, the, 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 the accents. And uh, we just turned on an EQ, uh, a little bit more low end because I felt like it was missing the big low ends. We don't really have huge drums in Logic and we're trying to sort of uh, substitute that a little bit. And a compressor. And the compressor is set to Optotoms, which is one of my favorites. Uh, threshold is set to six. And that's kind of it. And now you listen to it, you get a sort of bigger punchy sound. And now we add reverb onto bus 1. And bus 1 essentially is a reverb that sends to a space designer and it's fine hall. One of the standard ones that you can find under large spaces halls. Here we go. So let's see how it sounds with the reverb. Not bad. Pretty big, pretty big. And let's add one more layer on top of that. So it's got this big low end drums. It's exactly the same kit. I just split it across two tracks. So you put that together and that's what you get.
Now, that sounds pretty good, but I think we need some um, mid-end as well. And those are sort of like the mid-sized toms. So I used standard Logic drum kits. These are the Brooklyn kit, um, under drum kit. And this one is the Scientific Method kit. And um, the Brooklyn kit has toms like, like this. I just added some reverb as well. Scientific Method kit. So they're slightly different in nature. And that helps when you sort of stacking these toms together. So here's how they sound stacked up. And you can see that they're quantized to 16th notes. But uh, the trick I did with these is that um, I humanized them. So I selected the tracks, I mean the notes within the piano roll. And then under functions, you can do a MIDI transform of uh, humanize. And I set it to 10 ticks in random directions. And then you go select and operate. And what you'll get is a little bit of flaming between the two. And that gives it a sense of sort of uh, more players, bigger sound. And you can see that they're panned as well. This one's panned slightly to the right. And scientific it is panned slightly to the left. So let's hear how they sound. That's pretty cool. You know, there's some mid-end, high-end over there. And you pair it with the European kit. That is pretty nice and fat. Now, I wanted some top end as well. So there is a standard logic kit under drums and percussions, acoustic drum kits, studio brush kit. I just wanted a bit of a brush kind of sound. So I played it with the snare and some toms. Just to get that shiny top end and put them all together. And now we're adding a little bit more top end. Top to mid end actually. This is kind of a tom from the warehouse kit. And I've panned this to the right when I've panned the studio brush kit to the left to give it that sort of wideness about it. So when you put everything together, it sounds like this. Pretty nice, pretty nice. It's working out. Now, there is this studio toolkit under EXS24, under drums and percussion, acoustic drum kits. There is a studio toolkit. It's pretty useful. Have a listen. So there are a lot of interesting sounds in the studio toolkit kick type sounds, snare type sounds, flams and stuff like that, and some really smaller drums, and you get hats. So it's really like you know, various tools that you can use to enhance your sound, and I use that to make the sound bigger. So when you put that together, okay, let's listen to drums uh, before that and after the studio toolkit. Got bigger, right? So that's kind of the drums sorted, but I just wanted parts where um, there was a little bit more accenting. So it's just right at the end and uh, when we hit sort of the bridge of the song. And I used the same European folk kit, just clone the track, and here's what it is. So they're kind of like big toms. So here's how it sounds right at the end. Whoa, big ending. Um, something to note is that uh, you can see that there's an automation read here if you open it up. I just pushed it up because the ending really has that crescendo right to the last note until that small um, Santor Middle Eastern instrument over there. And talking about the Santor, um, 
I think it absolutely suits it. I think that's what they use in the original song as well. Sounds really nice. And yeah. So yeah, that one sorts out the end. And as for the strings, okay. I'm not gonna go into real detail of how to build up a string section here because Logic strings aren't great, but uh, a lot of people say you need to do you know four part strings like uh, bass, cello, viola, and violins. Maybe another set of violins, four five part strings. I didn't really do that because it's not about getting it exactly accurate. It's kind of getting the vibe of the sound right. So I did bass. I did a full string track. This is just cloned. I did another layer of EXS strings, violas. And for the solo, we had this cello, which is, this cello is under pop strings, Arco. And it's a solo cello. Uh, it's not particularly expressive. But it has to do. Because that's the only solo cello instrument that you have. The thing that I did to make it a little bit more expressive is to add some automation on top of it. I sort of just uh, use one of the keyboard faders to get the automation right. And uh, that gives it a little bit more life. And the end notes are always tapered down. As you can see, they go down to give it that decrescendo kind of feel. Uh, let's just have a listen to them. Let's solo this track. detect that decrescendo at the end. It's not particularly expressive as I said, but it would do. And these are the rest of the strings. Okay, EXS strings 1 is something you can find in standard library as well, under pop strings. I like it because it's really airy. It's nice and airy. And full strings have a nicer body about it. So if you put them together, you get a nice, you know, covering of all bases. And of course, the problem with these legato strings is that the attack is really slow, which means I had to nudge the whole thing back a little bit, as you can see here, so that the attack sort of comes on right on the tempo. Otherwise, it'll feel a little bit slow. And these here, it's the same track, it's just a pad. Just to fill out the sound a little bit, make it bigger. And we have a bass, which is something you can find in orchestral strings, basses legato, all these are standard stuff. So here's how the bass sounds. So just long line basses. Uh, some parts are doubled. Just to give it a bit more body. And um, so here's how the strings sound. And I added another cello right after everything because I felt like it needed more. So this cello is kind of staccatoing itself across the, um, across the rhythm. You got to be careful with these instruments because they're not particularly expressive, uh, which means you can't put them too forward because you can hear the repetitions, you know. Um, just kind of just want to blend together everything as much as possible. And one thing that I kind of like that was a standard sound is a French horn, which is under orchestral brass, French horn's legato. And here's how it sounds.
I love French horns. You know, I think they enhance any kind of uh, orchestral sound. And when you put them together here, the, it really does enhance the sound. With the staccato cellos. You notice that this section here, the strings got bigger because I essentially doubled them, octaved them, and you can see I pushed some of them just to make the attack arrive on time. So there's a bit of uh, mucking about just to get the right attacks, just to get the right sounds. A bit of stacking of layers. Some things are actually playing the same things like violas legato and EXS strings 1 are playing the same things. They're stacked. As you can see, I just copied them over. And um, here's how it sounds right at the end. And you can see that there's uh, a bit of automation going on with the European Folk Kit. And with the strings, you can see that uh, I increase the velocities here just to give it that bit more bite at the end. I didn't do any automation, I just wanted the strings to get that little bit louder. So that's how it sounds. And just one more detail to do, like just to get that vibe, is I found this library within Logic called Textures and uh, FX. And there's a ton of fun sounds that you can get from this. Uh, these are all just like trailer FX, so it's all just big hits. Which is really nice. And at the start of this song, I wanted just that sort of anvil-like icy hit, and here's what we got. So when you put it together with everything, you get a bit more of a dramatic beginning. Which I really like. So that's really cool. If you want to find some big hit and big sounds, um, the trailer FX stuff is really good. I hope you learned something useful today. Logic does have its limitations with the instruments, but with careful automation, you know, crafting of it, using effects and stacking instruments, you can actually get something pretty good. And if you want to have the project to play around with, the link is below. And if you like it, subscribe to this for more videos. See ya.